Have you ever wondered how artificial intelligence systems like ChatGPT or Google's Gemini are trained to become so smart? Well, take a look at this animation. What you're seeing is a red dot rolling down a curved surface, seemingly finding its way to the lowest point on the landscape. It may look simple, but this animation illustrates one of the most important methods in all of machine learning and deep learning. This is how machines learn. It's called gradient descent, and it's the backbone of training everything from a simple linear regression model to the largest neural networks used in state-of-the-art AI. But here's something surprising. This powerful idea wasn't invented by a computer scientist or an AI engineer. It was first proposed in 1847 by Augustin Louis Cauchy, a French mathematician and physicist. So how exactly did a 19th century idea become the core training method for AI? What's the intuition behind this method, and why does it still work so well? And what problems does gradient descent still face? Problems that we haven't fully solved even today. Let's explore. Before moving forward, if you are from a map-based field like physics looking for a data science industry job, I invite you to join our bootcamp. Here are the key highlights of the program. Most importantly, it's free if no job is landed. Also, there will be weekly, live, expert-led, hands-on project solving sessions. In almost every machine learning problem, our ultimate goal is to minimize a function. This function, often called the loss function or cost function, measures how well our model is doing. Let me explain. Suppose we're training a model to predict house prices. For each house in our data set, we know the actual price, y sub i, and we have the predicted price from our model y hat sub i. The goal is to make the two as close as possible. To quantify this error, we define a loss function. If you have watched my previous videos, in linear regression for example, the loss function is the residual sum of squares, RSS, and the predicted value is modeled using the following equation where beta 0 is the intercept, beta j are the parameters or weights, and xij are the input features for the ith sample. We want to find the values of beta 0, beta 1, and the rest, for which the RSS becomes minimum. When we've found the values of these parameters that give the lowest possible RSS, we say we've trained the model. Now, from calculus, we know something very useful. A function reaches its minimum when its derivative is 0. So, the natural idea is to compute the partial derivatives of the loss function with respect to all the free parameters and solve the resulting system of equations. But here's the problem. For many machine learning models, especially deep neural networks, this system of equations is non-linear, high-dimensional, and simply too complicated to solve analytically. So we turn to numerical methods, and that's where gradient descent comes in. But before we dive into that, let's talk about gradients. The concept of the gradient was formalized by another physicist and mathematician, William Rowan Hamilton, in the 1830s. He introduced the Nabla operator, which became the foundation for vector calculus. The gradient of a scalar-valued function f of beta, where beta is a vector of parameters, is a vector that points in the direction of steepest increase of f. Mathematically, it can be shown as the following. If we want to maximize a function, we move in the direction of the gradient. If we want to minimize it, we go in the opposite direction. And that's what Cauchy suggested back in 1847. Instead of solving the equations directly, we could iteratively take steps in the direction opposite to the gradient until we reach a minimum. This iterative method is what we now call gradient descent. So, here's how it works in practice. We start by randomly selecting a point in the parameter space. Let's call it bold beta to the zero our initial guess for the parameters. Then, we compute the gradient of the loss function at that point, where the curly L is our loss function. Next, we take a step in the negative gradient direction. Here, ETA is a small positive number called the learning rate. It controls how big a step we take. We repeat this process until the change in the loss function becomes negligible. Eventually, we reach a point where the loss function stops decreasing significantly. At that point, we found our optimal parameters. This means we've trained our model without ever solving the equations explicitly. It's elegant, simple, and it works, even in thousands or millions of dimensions. 
But of course, real-world optimization is rarely smooth sailing. Let's talk about some of the limitations of gradient descent. First, there's the issue of local minima. Many loss functions, especially in deep learning, are non-convex. This means they have many local minima. Depending on where we start, gradient descent might find a local minimum instead of the global one. That's why initialization matters. Sometimes just picking a better starting point can lead to a much better solution. Second, we have the issue of saddle points and plateaus. A saddle point is a point where the gradient is zero, but the point is neither a minimum nor a maximum. In high dimensions, saddle points are actually much more common than local minima. Then there are flat regions where the gradient is almost zero for a large area. When the algorithm enters such a region, it slows down dramatically, even though it hasn't yet reached the minimum. So, how do we deal with these challenges? One approach is to use adaptive learning rates. Instead of keeping eta fixed, we allow it to change based on the history of the gradients. Methods like Atagrad, RMSProp, and Atom do exactly this. For example, Atom keeps a moving average of both the gradients and their squared values to scale the learning rate adaptively for each parameter. Where MT is the exponential moving average of the gradient, VT is the exponential moving average of the squared gradient, and Epsilon is a small constant to prevent division by zero. These optimizers are robust to noise, and they handle plateaus and sharp curvatures better than basic gradient descent. So there you have it. An idea born in the 19th century is now at the heart of how we train the most advanced AI systems in the 21st century. Gradient descent helps us navigate high-dimensional landscapes without ever needing to solve complicated equations. It's not perfect. It struggles with local minima, saddle points, and plateaus. But thanks to ongoing innovations in optimization, we're making gradient descent faster, more reliable, and more powerful, pushing the boundaries of what machines can learn. And it all began with a simple question. How do we go downhill, one step at a time? I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, take care of yourself.